All right, so I couldn't in good conscience um, <clears throat> just put up the notes for you guys and not give you somewhat of an explanation of what's going on. So I'm going to try to make this a, a relatively quick video, and we'll see how this goes. Um, so this page that we skipped, find all the points in the graph of f of x, which is that cubic uh, cube root function there, for which dy dx equals 0, or which for which dy dx does not exist. So for the derivative to equal 0, it's pretty clear we take the derivative, we set it equal to 0, and we might also be able to find out where it doesn't exist. So the first thing we need is f prime. I'm going to rewrite f of x, first of all, as just a power. So x squared minus 1, and that'll be to the 2 thirds power, right, power over root. So this will become a chain rule. So the derivative will be the outside piece is 2 thirds decrease the power by 1, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. There's our derivative. Now this is where we actually do want to simplify and rewrite this in its proper form. It will help. So the negative one-third power will drop that to the denominator with the three of the two-thirds. So I'll have three um, cube root or just x squared minus one to the one-third. And on the top, the two x gets multiplied by the two, so we have four x. So in order for this to equal zero, we know that the numerator has to equal zero. So we're going to set 4x equal to 0. In order for this to be undefined or does not exist, it's when the denominator of the derivative doesn't equal 0. Because if the derivative's denominator equals 0, the derivative won't exist. So we'll set the denominator equal to 0. So this part is for dy dx equals 0. This part is for dy dx does not exist. So the first one's easy. First one for dy dx equals 0 is simply when x equals 0. For when the derivative doesn't exist, we'll divide both sides by 3. The good thing is dividing by 0 by 3 is still 0. And then cubing both sides, again, cubing 0 is 0. So really, it's when x squared minus 1 equals 0, and that's going to occur at plus or minus 1. You could factor that to x minus 1, x plus 1, or you could add 1 to both sides, take the square root, as long as you remember the plus or minus 1. So the derivative will not equal 0 and will not exist at the three values that are shown there. All right, application, small application of the chain rule there. Okay. Uh, notationally, this um, example here, suppose that W, it's supposed to be U of V, that looks like a times, it's supposed to be U of V, wow, cannot draw the little open circle, there we go, U of V, <coughs> which is the same thing as U of V of X, kind of a thing. All right. They give us a whole bunch of different values, but they did not actually give us u and v. What we know is that w is defined to be the composite of u and v. So if I want to find w prime of 0, the first thing I need is w prime of x in general. Well, this is w. So it's the derivative of the outside piece, u prime of v of x, times the derivative of the inside piece, v prime of x. And then we have values. Let's see, v prime of, we got to plug in 0, sorry. So w prime of 0 is u prime of v of 0 times v prime of 0. So v of 0, we know it's given to us. v of 0 is right here. That's 2, so that gets plugged in there. And v prime of 0 is right here. That's 5. And then I also know u prime of 2, that is here, so that's 4. So we get 4 times 5, which is 20. All right, hopefully you guys are good there following that in general. They added a whole bunch of other values that were not necessary, but that's going to that's gonna happen sometimes. Okay, we did 
the first one here, f of f prime. I'm going to go ahead and fill out g of g here. So we want g, capital G prime of 3, so we need g prime of x, which is outside derivative times the inside derivative. And we want that at 3. So g prime of g of 3 times g prime of 3. Let's see, go up to our chart here. So g of 3, g of 3, that's 2. So I'll have g prime of 2. And then g prime of 3 is 9. And then g prime of 2 is 7. So 7 times 9 is 63. All right, the one I really wanted to make sure we got to was number three. This one takes a little bit longer just because um, there's a little extra math to do here. So we want to find, according to this, g prime of one. And g of x is defined as f of f of x. What you should notice here, however, is that I've, they've given me x, they've given me f of x. If I want to find g prime in general, it's the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. They did not give me anything of f prime. I can figure out one of these pieces though. I am looking for g prime of 1. So that's going to be f prime of f of 1 times f prime of 1. The one that I do know is f of 1. That's given to me. When x is 1, the f function is 2. So I'm going to be doing f prime of 2 times f prime of 1. But if we read the, um, the directions carefully, it says use the table to estimate the value of g prime of 1. And that's because we cannot find the exact value of g prime of 1 here. We don't have enough information. But we do have enough information to estimate it. Specifically, remember that the derivative is the slope. And if we don't have a way to find the exact slope, the best that we can do is estimate. And that's going to happen an awful lot, especially in real life circumstances. So it's f prime of 2. Well, here's where x equals 2. I know the values that surround 2. For example, this is another x value, and these two are y values. So if I want to estimate the slope around 2, I can do a y2 minus y1 over an x2 minus x1 and get it a secant slope, which is a good estimate or an average. But that's only an average on the high side. I probably want to average the low side as well. So I can do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and both of those values equally surround 2 because the x values are exactly 0.5 away on both sides. And then I can average those two. So really, it's just doing two average slopes and then averaging that. So over here, f prime of 2 will be approximately equal to the two average slopes averaged. So let's see what we get. First one will be 4.4 minus 3.1 over 2.5 minus 2. So let's see, the numerator, 4.4 minus 3.1 is 1.3 over 0.5, which if I multiply the top and the bottom by 10, you get 13 fifths. The other side of this is going to be if I do 3.1 minus 2.4 over 2 minus 1.5. That's going to be 0.7 over 0.5. Again, multiplying top and bottom by 10 is 7 fifths. So the approximate slope is the average of those two. Well, 7 fifths and 13 fifths add up to 20 fifths. Divided by 2 is going to be um, 10 fifths, which is 2. So average those two, and you get 2. So f prime of 2 is approximately equal to 2. Do the same exact thing for f prime of 1. 
same exact idea. I can do a y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 here, and then y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 here, and average the two. So let's see, we get 2.4 minus 2 over 1.5 minus 1. So that's going to be 0.4 over 0.5, which is 4 fifths. And then 2 minus 1.8 over 1 minus 0.5. So 0.2 over 0.5, which is 2 fifths. <coughs> which is, if you add those together, 6 fifths divided by 2 is 3 fifths. This pen is very sensitive. It keeps put, putting those dots on there. And I'm not intending that. Nice Groupon deal there for you guys. So we're averaging 3 fifths, so F prime of 1 is approximately 3 fifths. So ultimately what we get out of this is that G prime of 1 is approximately equal to six fifths. All right, one more. <clears throat> and all this is is a triple chain f of g of h of x. So if I want to find r prime of one, I need r prime of x. So we take the derivative of the outside most piece, that's f, f prime of g of h of x. Sometimes keeping the parentheses is the hardest part. Looks like that's right. Times the derivative of the next inside piece, which is d, g prime of h of x. And then times the derivative of the most inside piece, which is h prime of x. And if I want r prime of 1, it's f prime of g of h of 1 times g prime of h of 1 times h prime of 1. Let's fill in what we can. h of 1 is, where is it? Here it is. h of 1 is 2. So that's a 2. h of 1 is 2. h prime of 1, however, is somewhere up here, right here, 4. All right, let's see what else we need. G prime of 2. G prime of 2 is right here. That's 5. And G of 2 is, where is G of 2? Here it is, 3. So that goes in there. So then I'm taking F prime of 3, which is literally the only thing left up here. And that's 6. 6 times 5 times 4, 30 times 4 is 120. All right, there you go. That's, uh, that should be everything you need to finish up the chain rule packet.